right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Patrick Wenoise, who is the author of the upcoming book, The Persuasion Code, How Neuromarketing Can Help You Persuade Anyone, Anywhere, Anytime. So welcome, Patrick. Hey, good afternoon, John. So, Patrick, you have been talking about uh, neuromarketing, and you, you have, you know, you authored another book before, and you've been in this, in this area, you know, for a long, long time. So, tell me a little bit about what is what is different about your book that's coming out in September, the the Persuasion Code. So, what happened is about seventeen years ago, there was a new branch of marketing that was born called neuromarketing, and here is the promise of neuromarketing. The promise is that. Traditional marketing does not really work. Why? Because in traditional marketing, here is what we do. We ask people, what do you want? And then based on their answers, we will build a product and later we will create a strategy to sell that product. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that people don't really know what they want. As a result, traditional marketing is very often failing. And the promise of neuromarketing was very different. The promise of neuromarketing is that we would ask people, what do you want? But we will not trust their self-reported answers. Instead, we could measure directly on their bodies various physiological changes that indicate what people truly want. So 17 years ago, the world was on fire when people started to use this because the promise was just too good to be mm -hmm. true. And so if you fast forward 17 years later, neuromarketing has exploded. In other words, today there are over 100 companies in the world that offer various kinds of services around neuromarketing. But it has not really delivered on its initial promise. Right. And it has not initially delivered. Why? Because there is not a single unifying model that explains what you find when you do these physiological measurements. In other words, anybody can do various kinds of physiological measurements. And by the way, those techniques go from very simple, very inexpensive ones where you can measure, for example, the EEG on the head of people, or you can measure their emotion based on how they contract the 43 muscles on their faces, right. or you can measure how their skin changes react, you know, resistance. So all these measurements are very easy to do. But what's really hard is how do you interpret them in a complete, you know, sales and marketing approach? In other words, how should an, adver an advertiser change his sales and marketing strategy based on those measurements? So... Unfortunately, the initial promise of neural marketing has not really delivered. Mm -hmm. So when we wrote our first book, we suggested that there might be a model that helps you guide everything you do in neural marketing to make it really effective. Right. But we had not tied all that model to all these measurements. So what's completely new in our new book is that we are now explaining how it really works. In other words, it's a little bit like if you were talking about physics. As you know, in physics, we are trying to unify the two basic physics model. The traditional physics by, Doc, by um, oh, help me with his name. He was a British guy. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, Newton, Newton, the Newtonian Newton, physics, yeah. right? Yeah. And the uh, quantum physics. Mm -hmm. So there is not a single unifying model yet, but we're getting closer and closer. Well, there is no single unifying model of sales and marketing. And our model, we believe, is the very first one that just does it. In other words, it's a complete model that explains how people use their brain to make buying decisions. And based on that, it helps any entrepreneur, anybody who has to convince other people about what they need to do if they want to be more successful in sales and marketing. Right. So, so explain to the people um, listening to this who may not uh, have come across this before or not really paid it much attention. Why, why is it that you can't trust what people initially say they want? Or why is it that, um, that neuroscience plays such a big role in really understanding what, you know, how people make decisions as opposed to what they say? Sure. Well, think about it. If I ask you, imagine you walk in a restaurant mm -hmm. and instead of offering you a menu, I ask you, what do you want to eat tonight? You see how embarrassing, how difficult it is to figure out what you really want? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you see the menu, you go, oh, yeah, the, you know, the, the chicken looks really good on the menu today. So when people have to self-report what they really want or what they really like, they are going through the funnel of expressing with words what they want. Mm -hmm. And that does not allow them to really access their unconscious. 
As you know, in the mind, if you think about it, there is really a conscious part, which is only 5 to 10% of who we are. And then there is this big iceberg underneath it, which is 90% of who we are. And we rarely have access to that unconscious. And asking people to access that unconscious by using words, you know, self-reported words, mm -hmm. is mission impossible. Right. So the reality is people don't really know what they want. However, our body does. So, for example, when you get scared, you know, you get the first signs of fear even before you're aware that sure. you're scared. Mm -hmm. And today, there are a number of tools that we can use to make those measurements. So in essence, those measurements are allowing us to poke into the unconscious of people. And the techniques are very reliable. Right. In the past, they used to be very complicated. In other words, you needed a supercomputer. You needed 10 PhDs to run it and a big budget. Today, all these techniques have made it you know, very affordable. In fact, some of these techniques are even accessible for free on the web. So how, how would you, um, if you take this over to sales for a moment, right? So, uh, you know, salespeople have to ask a lot of questions and do discovery and really try and uncover what somebody, uh, what a prospect is looking for. So how does it play into that? Because uh, like you said, I mean, maybe uh, this is a difficult process for the actual customer. Yes. So in the case of a salespeople, in other words, if you take that idea and put it in the context of a one-on-one -on -one meeting yep. between a buyer and a seller. I mean, the, one, the very first task of the seller is really to understand what are some of the negative thoughts that are going into the mind of the buyer. I mean, in our book, we call that the pain. Mm -hmm. But the unconscious pain, we believe, are more important than the conscious pains. And I'm going to give you an example. Right. Now, imagine the seller is selling home-delivered pizza, right? and the buyer is the average consumer of pizza. Mm -hmm. Most people, when you ask them, so what do you want when it comes to a pizza? You know, people can talk about, they will tell you, I want extra pepperoni and I want cheese, etc. But in reality, there is a small company in the U.S. that figured this out about 40 years ago. They figured out that the number one pain of people who buy home delivered pizza, in other words, almost like the unconscious pain, is the anxiety of not knowing when the pizza will arrive. Right. And again, it would be almost it would be impossible for most people to word that, but we can measure it on our body. Mm -hmm. And figuring this out, that little pizza shop came up with a slogan, and their slogan was 30 minutes or less, or it's free. Mm -hmm. And that little place is now known as Domino's Pizza, and they became number one. Now, Domino's became number one not because they make the best pizza, but because they were able to diagnose that pain, and then they build a complete organization whose unique purpose is to eliminate that pain. Mm -hmm. So this is the case of Domino's. Going back to our case of a single one-on-one -on -one person selling, the job of the sales guy is to read between the line of the answers that the person will, that the person will give him. Right? Mm -hmm. So if I am that person trying to sell you Domino's pizza, I'm going to ask you questions about, so you know, you're going to be home at, at, alone tonight. Right. What are some of the thoughts that go through your brain, et cetera? And I'm going to try to force you to admit that you have this unconscious pain. But as you can imagine, it's a very difficult job. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's a job which is more the job of a psychologist than it is the job of a salesperson. And that's why salespeople typically are not very good at doing this because we train our salespeople to be good talkers. Unfortunately, most of them are not good listeners. Mm -hmm. And to do a good diagnostic of that pain, to find between the line what the consumer really wants, it takes somebody who has the capacity to listen very deeply, mm -hmm. and it takes the capacity of people who can ask, ask the right questions. And and a, a, a prospect or a customer, um, it's one of the, 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 the value drivers will reward you for uncovering something you know, a problem or a pain that they either didn't know they had or didn't know, weren't aware that it was that acute, right? So that's really where you, where it well, comes in. Yeah, when you do that diagnostic of the pain properly, there are two major benefits. The first benefit is it's a soft way of selling. In other words, you, you don't have to say, well, we have the best product, I'm the best sales guy. No, you're demonstrating your expertise, not by what you say, but by what you ask for, by the quality of the questioning that you drive. So that's the first thing. The second thing is asking questions is the best way to develop rapport, mm -hmm. right? If you think about it, the people that are interesting are not the people that talk 
about themselves. They are the people that talk to you about you. Right. So what's the best way for me to talk to you about you? It's to ask you a question. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so get, getting back, uh, pivoting back a little to the, the neuromarketing piece. So when you look at, at most companies marketing today, say software products or, or whatever, what, what, what do you see as, as the big um, problem with the, the, the kind of traditional marketing and how could people flip that using neuromarketing? Well, the problem is that marketing well done typically is very expensive. Right? I mean, you, you need to do big surveys, you need to question a lot of people. Uh, so I think a lot of people think of marketing as an expensive task. But when I think about it, for us, neural marketing is really what can help people differentiate between the, what people think they want and what people really want deep inside their unconscious. Mm -hmm. And for large company, this is invaluable. You know, I'll, I'll give you just one example, but we're working for Avon, for example, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, applying some of our techniques, they've been able to see sales increase by up to 40% for some of the shampoo products. Because a lot of the ads that they were doing were too focused on the product itself, etc. But it was not really addressing some of the core pains or negative emotion that resides in the brain of the consumers. Right. So that is really the, the promise of neural marketing. It's to help people defocus everything they talk about, which typically is centered on the me, 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 right? I mean, most people, if you think about it, most people, when they talk about their product and services, they talk about who they are and what they do. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at all websites, most websites include a tab which is called who we are and another tab which is called what we do. Mm -hmm. But the critical information that is missing there is why should the customer buy? Right. And what we have seen is that neuromarketing is the fastest, the surest way to get companies to quickly focus and narrow down on the why the customer should buy. So what are some other examples that you've seen of where somebody has done this well, where they've, they've changed their marketing approach and, and really hit the, uh, you know, hit the target? You know, there are now many examples, but if you're talking about Apple, for example, right, the computer and uh, phone company, uh, Steve Jobs, by the way, used to say, we don't do marketing at Apple because the consumer doesn't know. And I know better than them what they want. So we're going to build it. If, you're not, if I'm not completely wrong, we're going to sell a lot of it. Right? Mm -hmm. But Apple has been the champion of this. Now, think about it. Uh, I'd like to take you back about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Why would people want to buy an Apple computer? 30 years ago. There was only one reason. Think about it. Um, 30 years ago? Um, yes. I mean, the reason is slightly different today. That's why I'm, I'm yeah. bringing you back a few years back. Why would people buy a Macintosh when their main computer, well, their main competitor at the time was the regular PC? Mm -hmm. Um, at the at the time, they, it was very specialized. I mean, there were people maybe actually it was yes. designers and people like that who bought Macs. And Right, and a few students. A few but you students. know what was the main reason why? Because it was easier to use. Yeah. In other words, if you were buying a PC, if you didn't have a degree in computer science, it would be very hard for you to use it, right? right. So Macintosh make it easier for people. So Apple used that claim. In other words, the reason why you would want to buy a Apple computer years and years ago was easier to use. Mm -hmm. And slowly over time, as computers became easier to use, Apple endorsed another claim. And why would people buy an iPhone today? There is still only one reason, but it's slightly different. It's no longer easier to use because every phone is easy to use. And you know what it is? It's cool to use. Cool, yep. So this, again, so Apple decided once and for all in their 35 year history, they went from having one claim easy to use and they slowly switched to cool to use over a period of time. But they did that because they know that having one claim, in other words, being able to write the book, Why Buy an Apple, on the only one chapter, mm -hmm. and hammering on that chapter, you know, because when Apple 20 years ago was selling a computer, it was always, you know, easy to use, easy to use, easy to use. By creating that repetition, by making it clear as to what is that one chapter in the book titled, Why Buy an Apple, Apple has been extremely, extremely successful. So Apple was using some of the concept that we are now explaining from a purely scientific standpoint for for many many years right so so basically um based on that then are you saying that 
most companies should really look at uncovering that that one or two reasons, real reasons why a customer should buy from them. And Absolutely. It, and it and it and as you say, it's not the obvious one in terms of it may not be the the product itself. It may not. It may be something you know totally tangential even to it, right? Absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, right? easy to use and a Macintosh computer. It has nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, fast delivery has nothing to do with the pizza itself. In other words, unfortunately, if you're selling a commodity, yep. you will not be able to find what makes you unique in the product itself because by definition, it's a commodity. So you've got to find that one reason why people want to buy it and it's going to be outside of the product functions and features itself. Mm -hmm. And all the companies that are successful have understood it for a long, long time. That's uh, uh, excellent advice. So um, before we finish up today, um, g give me a little bit more information about you, when your book is available, about your company, about yourself, and how people can learn more about you. Right. So our first book is available. It, you know, it was written about 15 years ago, so it's still available. Our new book titled The Persuasion Code will be available in mid-September. It's published by Wiley, and the information is already available on Amazon.com. And uh, what we are is we are the only advertising agency in the world that uses neural marketing techniques to diagnose the pain of the customer. In other words, find the true motivation that drives people to buy. Then we are a strategic consulting firm. We guide the choice of companies on what is that one chapter in your book. Mm -hmm. And we train people on all these concepts. Right? And the last thing we do is we have a small creative arm then once we have agreed on all these concepts, uh, they actually rhyme. So the, the, our concepts are, what are the pains in the brain of your customers and how do you do, diagnose that? Then the second concept is, how do you differentiate your claims? In other words, how do you make your solution appear completely unique in the eyes of your customers, mm -hmm. even if you're selling commodity, or we call that the claims. The third concept is, how do you demonstrate the gain? In other words, it's not enough to say, I have the best product. Sure. How do you actually prove it? Right? And how do you prove the value? So pain, claim, and gain. And the last step is how do you deliver to the primal brain? In other words, how do you deliver your message to the unconscious of the consumer? Okay, so uh, we, we, packages, we package our services so that small companies and large companies alike can see benefit in applying a model that is, again, completely anchored in the science of the human brain. Yeah, it, it's fascinating stuff. And uh, I've had the pleasure of seeing... Uh, Patrick speak before, so I would highly uh, recommend that you you check out uh, the Sales Brain and check out Patrick and and check out his book. and I think you'll find it extremely fascinating. So listen, thanks again, Patrick, for joining us today. We look forward to uh, to your book and to seeing the model in in all its glory coming out in September, and and learning more about this fascinating subject. So thank you for joining us today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. We'll see you all for another expert inside interview really soon thank you john so i encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net the online sales magazine also subscribe to our youtube channel and then comment get involved in the conversation love to hear what you have to say